life to happen, for basic cellular processes to happen, that requires cells to build massive molecular machines. Our lab is interested in understanding exactly how the cell puts these things together. How does it fold the individual components, orient them relative to one another, and allow them to come together to form these machines. And what I think is really fascinating about this is despite the complexity, you know, you have these hundreds of components coming together, the cell is able to do it rapidly and efficiently. My dad worked in construction his whole life, so I was always around construction and thinking about how things were built. I realized that there's just like amazing what biology is able to build on its own. I wanted to learn how it does that. And as I delved further and further into the problem, it became very clear that at some fundamental levels, we don't actually understand how biology is able to build machines like this. So I did my PhD work here in the MIT biology department in Bob Sauer's lab. And that's really where I sort of learned how to do science. It's where I learned all my experimental work. And really the people that I got to interact with and the colleagues that I, I met while I was at MIT is what brought me back to try to be part of that community again. There's two main complexes that the lab works on currently. One is the ribosome, and this is this machine that um, is required for all translation in the cell, and we're interested in understanding exactly how the ribosome is built. And the other complex we're interested in is sort of the other side of proteostasis, which is um, autophagy. So autophagy is a cellular homeostasis process that the cell uses to degrade um, damaged or otherwise no longer necessary organelles. And we're interested in understanding how it builds the autophagosome, which is the main compartment it uses to do this degradation. So it's been really difficult to study this problem historically, in part because we really lack the tools to look at the assembly intermediates. One of the things that really excites me about being at MIT is that we now have access to electron microscopy, and this has really been sort of the key that unlocks this entire world for us. Prior electron microscopy is it allows us to look at a bunch of intermediates in parallel. So if we just slow down the process and we have intermediates sort of all the way along the pathway, we can put those onto a grid, image them, and then try to make sense of how that actually assembles. How do they interconvert? What's the order of each one of the intermediates that we've observed? Typically, my lab will set up an experiment where we put in a block, for example, by withholding a specific factor genetically or adding a small molecule that we know inhibits that portion of the process. What's neat about that is it allows a bunch of intermediates to accumulate, and then we can biochemically purify those from the cell. We'll take that purified material and we can determine its composition using mass spectrometry. That tells us all the proteins that are present and the abundance of those proteins. And then we can look at the structure of the particles by cryo-electron microscopy, and that tells us where those proteins are bound and in what conformation the entire structure is formed. A number of other labs will just focus on using mass spectrometry, or just electron microscopy, or just genetics, or just biochemistry. And our hope is to try to integrate all those methods and give ourselves a holistic view of how the process happens. The really long-term goals of the work is to try to understand um, how we might intervene in these processes. So we think that a number of diseases are linked to the inability of cells to properly build autophagosomes or degrade substrates. And long-term, we'd like to understand exactly how that breaks down in these diseases and then develop pharmacological interventions to mitigate those diseases. And then finally, this is just sort of a, a dark area of biology where we just don't know what's going on. And so the hope is that we'll learn more about how the natural world works by studying these processes. I think the most amazing thing about MIT is the community. It's not the exact equipment or the buildings, but it's really colleagues that you're able to run into when you walk down the hall and they're excited about their work and they're excited to talk to you about your own work. And then also just the fantastic students that I get to interact with every day.